Kalimera from Athens, in central Athens. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've been up to in the last couple of days, which is the reason why I haven't been making many videos. Um, and I'll tell you that for a reason which you'll understand soon. So we've come back from Awesomeness Fest in Mykonos and at the end of Awesomeness Fest we had a special day called Give Back Day where you saw my previous video. We packaged a whole heap of donations together from 400 um, attendees and we actually brought back all those boxes to Athens to then, to then donate to the different refugee camps um, around, around Athens and Greece. Now we had a small group of us, we were about 13 participants that ended up staying in Athens together for the last two days. Um, and we had the unique opportunity to actually go and actually see some of the refugee camps and speak to some of the people that are living in there. Um, which is why I couldn't film because it's just not appropriate to do so. Um, but we've got a lot of interesting insights and everyone's, all of us, all 13 of us have just kind of had our lives shifted a little bit from the experience. Um, we went to three different camps. Um, the first night we saw it was a camp called Skaramanga, which was mainly, well, a whole heap of people from different areas, but mainly um, from Syria. And just the people that we connected to, they were, you know, you realize that they're just people like you and I, but just born in the wrong place at the wrong time and just you know, lost some of their dignity in coming here. Um, beautiful people, um, you know, met these two, one story is these, these two beautiful girls, um, Lamya and Sanya, and they were nine and 10, and they just came up with open arms and just gave me a beautiful hug. And you know, they gave me these bracelets, which they only own two bracelets. <laughs> And they gave 50% of their jewellery to me and I felt so bad receiving them, but they got so much joy in giving the few possessions that they have. Um, so I've promised them that I'll wear them, you know, and think of them, which I am right now. Um, and a couple of the, the participants, I'm actually leaving for Copenhagen today, but a couple of the participants are gonna go back and try and get in contact with them and find their Facebook and, you know, maybe stay in touch. Another kid, um, he's 15 year old, um, Syrian called Muhammad and his English was amazing he wants to be a pilot he wants to go to Canada um, he's got kind of these leadership qualities and it's just about giving them this opportunity to shine and to, to make something of their life but you know we've got to do something ourselves um, the two other camps we visited one was as um, where the school box project is it's like a container that where we put all of our toys that we donated into and that was on the port of Piraeus um, the camp wasn't that full but it was the people that were there had just arrived maybe two or three months ago so a lot of traumatized um, you know, a lot of traumatized people living there a lot of kids that don't really know what's happened with their lives and they see things and they just want to hoard everything so Every time something gets put up, like a shade structure, if it doesn't get taken down at night, people would steal it and take it because they just need, they just need something. They're missing something. Um, again, met the most beautiful people, beautiful children. Um, you know, just again, just connecting from a human scale, a human perspective. And then the last camp we went to yesterday was, um, I found the most interesting one. Um, it was at the old, Olympic Airport, which is located in the richest part of Athens. Yet, ironically, it is the unofficial um, refugee camp that's not supported by government, um, where 98% of the 4,000 people living there are actually from Afghanistan. And politically, um, Afghanistan is the least prioritized refugee country, so the government isn't doing much to support, to support Afghanis. And considering that Greece is already not doing well themselves, it's a huge, huge challenge. So we walked through and when you go through the airport, there's just a community of tents in there and it's so ironic to see refugees coming in, staying there and then you've got these departure signs, you know, like from a normal airport and it's just like, what the F is going on? Like, this is crazy. Um, most of them spoke Farsi. Um, one of our participants spoke some Farsi and we had two actual Afghani um, refugees that have been here for a few years that have actually established themselves and were there as translators to help us engage in conversation with the people that were living there, who again also lived there only for a couple of months, have only been in Greece for a couple of months, but you know, they don't have adequate, they, they use the supplies that are still available in this airport, so there is toilets and water, but you know, no hot water. Um, there are some 500 women that have been pregnant either through rape or whatnot so some of them haven't intended to have kids they get put in a hospital for one day to have the kid and then they get sent back to this camp um, <clears throat> you know and 
but there's this amazing organisation that we've been working with that, that, that gave us the opportunity to be there called Emphasis and they've got a really cool project um, coming up. They're actually planning to construct an outdoor cinema on this big field just outside the airport. Um, and that's one to kind of embrace a traditional Greek culture in summer where you actually come together as a community, watch a free movie and then, and so it's embedding a bit of that culture. Um, but also to show an Afghani film to the Afghani refugees to let them feel like humans for two hours again, but also to create information giving videos in, in, the, in the language for people to understand where they can go. Because remember, these guys have no internet access, they've got no phones, they don't speak the language. Um, so all in all, I just <clears throat> am feeling so grateful for just all these experiences I've had, like, you know, starting with, you know, being with 400 amazing game-changing people and op that opened up my mind the first four days out on the islands, being like a rich person. But then the ones that really, really know the meaning of what Awesomeness Fest and what, you know, being a leader and entrepreneur is, those 13 people that came back here together and, you know, did something that's more beyond themselves. I'm just so grateful for that. Um, you know, the end of yesterday, we had a, an awesome strategy session because we were all from totally different backgrounds, different skill sets, brainstorming what it is that we can do to continue helping this and how can we resolve this crisis in any way that we can. So, so that's kind of me just brain dumping everything. Um, so much still to process and I'm really excited to hear what you know, all the others have to say. Um, we're going to compile a video. This video will hopefully be part of it. So I guess just to close off for this part of my adventure, um, yeah, I think you know, if, if a refugee that has nothing can give half of their possessions, of their jewellery possessions, to someone that has so much more than them, you know, imagine what we as you know, first world citizens can give, like we can give so much and yeah. I'm getting emotional so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Thank you for listening.